Where are our institutions? We keep talking about Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. But no city in America do I find African people owning their own hospital, their own bank, their own supermarket, and their own school. Those are the four essential institutions. Independent black hospital, independent black bank. You need a hospital to save the people, a bank to invest in the people, supermarket to feed the people, and a school to teach the people. Why we ain't got that? There's a Chinatown in damn near every major city. You got little Vietnam, little Cambodia, little Italy. Where's little Africa? You know why we ain't got it? Because something slipped did to the black man and woman. I don't care if your ancestors was enslaved in Cuba. I don't care if your ancestors was enslaved in Brazil, enslaved in North Philadelphia. Slavery stole from African people the desire. And I want you young people to hear me because you are the generation that is supposed to fix this. Slavery stole from African people the natural God-given desire to control your own destiny. Do you realize we're the only people not concerned about controlling our own community? We're the only people not concerned about controlling our own destiny? As soon as the Chinese show up on the shores of America, soon as an Arab shows up on the shores of America, soon as an East Indian shows up on the shores of America, they build in their own community. They're looking for a piece of a city to call their own, their own shops, their own businesses, their own import, export, and all we want to do is look good. Half y'all in here. Soon as you get your student loan check, you in New York City shopping because you want to look good. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't care if you're from Belize or the Bronx. You want to look good. Looking good is more important than having power. African people, we in pursuit of money. White people in pursuit of power. Father Rothschild said, what? Give me control over a people's money. I care not who makes the laws. Give me control over a people's money. I care not who makes the laws. We chasing money. Money don't make a difference. Look at all the black entertainers we got. Look at all the athletes and, and, and entertainers we got. All that money. And don't use none of it for the benefit of African people. They might give out some turkeys for Thanksgiving. Who the hell need another turkey? You worth $500 million and the best you can do for the black community is some stale ass turkeys, some sneakers, another playground dedication. That ain't what we need. We need institutions and industries, brothers and sisters. So number two, as Africa goes, so goes all African people. You will never be respected. I don't care where you move to in this world until Africa is respected. That's why Africa matters. You want to know why black folks get killed by the police in broad daylight and nothing happens? Who gonna speak up for you? What African country gonna stand up and say the next time you kill one of mine in your country, don't come over here looking for no gas. Next time you kill one of mine in your country, don't come over here looking for no oil. Next time you kill one of mine in your country, don't come over here looking for no diamonds or no coltan. Next time you kill one of mine in your country, you ain't getting another piece of mineral from under my soil. Because remember, the African continent is the only continent that can survive without any other continent. No other continent can survive without Africa. There is no military without Africa. There's no atomic bombs without Africa. There's no cell phone or no internet without Africa. The most essential minerals necessary for the military and technological age are under the ground in Africa. Everybody talking about Haiti and why America keep on destabilizing Haiti. You know why America keep on destabilizing Haiti? Because they have a mineral. And I'm forgetting the name of the mineral. There's only two countries in the world that has the mineral. Haiti is one of them, and Haiti has the most of it. They have the purest form of this mineral. And this is a mineral a metal that can withstand heat a thousand times longer than any other metal in the world. And the reason America needs to keep Haiti destabilized is to make sure no other country can come in, strike a deal with Haiti, and get some of that metal, which would make them a military giant overnight. Every last one of you should be reading a newspaper a day. 
You should be reading a global newspaper a month. Understand your world so you can decide on how you're going to set your place in it. It's not just about graduating from college and getting a job. That's not why you just here for that. Your ancestors didn't send you here to get a job. You were sent to earth to make a difference. How are you going to do that? As Africa goes, so goes the world. Until we make Africa strong enough to look out for us, police going to keep on killing black folks. There's Chinese gangs. We got Chinese gangs in Philly. They kill each other too. I ain't seen the police kill the Chinese gang member yet because they know there's going to be repercussions from China. That hurricane that hit Puerto Rico that the United States of America took so long to respond to, they would have never took that long to respond to that hurricane or the Haitian earthquake if they were being pressured by African countries. But then you get Negroes who say, Africa don't do nothing for me. Well, she can't because you have to make us strong enough to look out for you. We got the money, Africa got the resources, we got to marry them together. We got the income, Africa got the resources, we got to marry them together. But the problem with too many of us, all we wanna do is become a better version of a white man. Imitation is your priority. You wanna imitate people. And no disrespect to the white women in the room. I don't have a problem with no white women. I respect all women no matter what the color. But you young black men in here, don't call yourself a Pan-Africanist and you're not dating an African woman. You are a sellout. I'm a Pan-Africanist. No, you're not. You're a cop. You think it's a coincidence that black men date outside the race more than all other men put together? You think it's a coincidence? Young men in college date outside the race. Black men in college and in the world date outside the race more than any other man. That's because of slavery and self-hatred. That's because of slavery and self-hatred. Marriage is a business, y'all. Marriage is a business. Kobe Bryant is with the ancestors now. And the reason Kobe Bryant is with the ancestors now is because Kobe Bryant was about to start his own professional basketball league headquartered in China. The American white power structure couldn't allow that. China is America's number one competitor. They couldn't have Kobe Bryant going to China, starting a professional basketball league, competing with the American league. Kobe Bryant was also ending his contract with Nike, and he was starting his own player-owned sneaker brand. America couldn't let Kobe come up with another sneaker brand that would compete with the number one sneaker brand in America. That's why the helicopter went down. Kobe Bryant was murdered. It was not an accident. And they made LeBron James wear his number on his sneakers the night before while LeBron James played in Kobe Bryant's hometown of Philadelphia. Why is Michael Jordan, excuse me, why is Michael Jackson dead? Michael Jackson is dead because he owned half of Sony Records. He owned all of the Beatles catalog, a portion of Elvis's music, and they wanted the Beatles music back. Michael Jackson wouldn't sell it to him. Michael Jackson was in negotiations to purchase Marvel Studios, brothers and sisters. Marvel, that's Black Panther, that's, that's Xfinity Wars. Michael Jackson was gonna buy it up. And soon when Michael Jackson was trying to buy Marvel Studios, he got hit with the pedophilia accusations. Why is Whitney Houston dead? Whitney Houston is dead because Whitney Houston was about to order an audit on her earnings, her royalties. She also wanted her masters back in her publishing. So she died of a so-called drowning in the tub. Same way Jimi Hendrix died, best guitar player in the history of mankind, and he was murdered because his agent was a secret, uh, a secret MI6 officer for British intelligence, and Jimi Hendrix was going to finance the Black Panther Party, so they had to kill him. And Sam Cooke is died, had to die. First black man to own his own masters in the music industry. He was close friends with Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, and Dr. King, and he told Dr. King and Malcolm X that once they come together and stop fighting, Sam Cooke was going to finance the civil rights movement himself. R. Kelly might very well be guilty of the accusations. I don't know. I wasn't there. But that's not why he's, not in, that's not why he's in jail. R. Kelly is in jail because a certain music company, who I'm not going to mention right now, was started stealing R. Kelly's masters and playing his unpublished music without his permission. And once R. Kelly started questioning 
getting his masters back in control of his publishing, he ends up in jail for a crime he's been committing since he was a teenager. Why was Bill Cosby in jail? Bill Cosby was in jail because Bill Cosby, him and his wife Camille, owned a home in Massachusetts under which there was some oil. And the second largest oil company in the world wanted to drill under the home of Bill and Camille Cosby in Massachusetts. And when Bill and Camille Cosby said, you're not drilling under this house, and they organized all their neighbors so they wouldn't let none of them drill, next thing you know, he gets accused of 50 old women who say he molested them 30, 40 years ago. Now, I don't trivialize sexual violence against women, but guess what? There's not a white woman on the planet Earth who gets sexually abused by a black man in his prime. In the 1970s, Bill Cosby was the number one black television personality in the world. He's the first black man to have his own miniseries on television. The Cosby Show is the number one ranked black sitcom of all time. And Bill Cosby sexually harassed you in 1970 when you was young and beautiful, but you wait till you old and nasty in your 50s and 60s before you tell somebody about it? Bill Cosby went to jail because he didn't want to give up the house so they could get the oil. Why am I bringing this up? They got to read and study, and you don't just take what people tell you to be true. Develop your own mindset. You ain't even got to take what I say to be true. Go on and research it and find it out for yourself. What's the third principle of Pan-Africanism? We talked about, we identify as being African first. We talked about as Africa goes, so goes all African people. The third, self-determination. You know what that means? Anything we do, we do by ourselves and for ourselves. There is no non-African participation in our movements. There is no non-African money in our organizations. You don't know why black people haven't made more progress in this country since Dr. King's assassination 55 years ago? Because we've taken too much money from the government, too much money from the white philanthropic societies, too much money from white America. The hand that pays is the hand that rules. You'll never get free as long as your organizations are being financed by non-African people. That's why Marcus Garvey never took a penny from another race. There was once a white man in New York wanted to give Marcus Garvey a large donation. Marcus Garvey said, tell him to keep his money. What is to be done for us must be done by us. Some of y'all know I got a school I'm building in Wilmington, Delaware. Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. First school in the history of America built exclusively by the African diaspora. We will have our grand opening sometime this summer. All of you are invited. First school in the history of this country built with donations from every African community in the world. Never done before. And some people will come to me, Dr. Umar, I can help you get some COVID grants. I can help you get some Joe Biden money. I can help you get some Walmart donations. For what? If Walmart opens my school, Walmart owns it. If the U.S. government finances my school, the U.S. government owns it. People say, why don't you open up a charter school, Dr. Umar? I used to be a charter school principal. Yeah, I used to be a charter school principal, and I used to be a charter school vice principal, and I don't want to be no charter school principal. You know why? Because charter schools are ran by the state, controlled by the state, and when they have a problem with you, they will sabotage you, accuse you of financial mismanagement, low test scores, and shut you down. The school that we own in Delaware was a black charter school, and they sabotaged the founder and put him out of business. It might be harder to do it on your own, brothers and sisters, but you better learn that that's the best way to get it done. Don't you start taking money from other groups. The more money you take, the more indebted to them you are. Why do you think Africa's still in the position she in with all the aid Africa gets? People say Africa, Africans must not know how to solve their problems because America been pumping money, France been pumping money, the UK been pumping money, Belgium been pumping money, the UN been pumping money, the World Bank been pumping money. The International Monetary Fund been pumping money. Why Africa still messed up with all the resources she got? You know why? Because whenever they give Africa a loan, whenever they give a, a Caribbean island a loan, whenever they give a Central and South American African country a loan, they put three requirements with that loan. Requirement number one, 1,000% interest or more. You need $5 million. You wanna, buy, you wanna build schools in Rwanda. She wants $5 million. She's the president of Rwanda. And guess what America says? I'm going to give you $5 million, but I'm going to charge you 1,000% on every dollar. 
How long would it take Rwanda to pay back that loan? You'll be paying it back for the next 100 years. This is how they keep Africa in debt, by exploiting them with the interest rates. Number two, two minutes. Number two, they'll tell Africa, you have to have a free market economy. I need y'all to understand this. This is real important. I'm going to be quiet because I know we got a break and then we got the Q&A. Y'all be able to ask me anything you want. Second thing they do is they demand that African countries participate in the free market economy. You know what that means? You're the president of Senegal. In Senegal, y'all have your own salt. You don't need Morton salt. You don't need Whole Food salt. You don't want nobody selling salt in Senegal because Senegal got your own salt. You the president of Ghana. Y'all got palm oil. You don't need Crisco oil. You don't need canola oil. Y'all got your own oil. But guess what America gonna tell you? Guess what France gonna tell you? Guess what Belgium gonna tell you? They're gonna say, we know you got your own salt, but because I gave you $5 million to build some schools, you have to let all the American salt companies come into your country and compete with your homegrown salt company. So let me ask you all a question. If she has her own salt, but she can't protect her salt market, America says as a consequence of the loan, you gotta let all America's salt companies come into your country. What do you think happens to your salt industry within five years? sabotaged and shut down. You got your own palm oil. What happens to your homegrown palm oil industry after five years where you gotta compete with all the American, British, French, or Italian oil companies? You be sabotaged and shut down. This is why African countries, Caribbean countries, Central and South American countries are importing, importing food that they grow themselves. Why are you importing tea if you grow tea? Why are you importing chicken if you can raise your own chicken? Why are you importing things that you can make yourself because the European countries of the world sabotage Africa's growth? I want to close with this. And before we, do, before we take the break, take your phone out. I'm going to give you my number so you can reach me. If you are a psychology major and you need some advice about psychology, feel free to hit me. If you are an education major and you need some advice about education, feel free to hit me. If you are a political science major and you need some advice about political science, you can hit me as well. If you want to work at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, please send me your resume. Ladies, you cannot work at my school if you're not happy to be nappy. There will be no weave, no perm, no European hair color unless it is naturally yours. There will be no school teacher in my school imitating white women. We're imitating ourselves. Phone number 215-989-9858. I repeat, 215-989-9858. Once more, 215-989-9858. 9858 and I also want to say this, uh, and give a hand to Brother Garfield and the Latino brothers who put this together. But I want to come back, because we're going to have to do part two after we do the Q&A, but I'm going to have to come back and do part two, because there's a lot, lot, lot more we got to talk about and we got to go over. But I want to close with this quote. My family came to America in 1701. A black man named Bailey stolen from Nigeria. He was brought to Talbot County, Eastern Shore, Maryland. He married a black woman by the name of Selah, for whom my 11-year-old daughter is named. In 1745, Grandma Selah had Grandma Jenny. In 1774, Grandma Jenny had Grandma Betsy. Grandma Betsy was born a slave in Talbot County, Maryland, but she married a free black man, my grandpa Isaac. Between them were born 12 children. One daughter was named Harriet, and another daughter was named Young Betsy, my five times great-grandmother. These two black women were raped by Aaron Anthony, the white man who owned our family. And as a result of that rape, in February of 1818, my Aunt Harriet gave birth to the greatest black leader in American history. His name was Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey. At the age of 20, cousin Frederick ran away from slavery in Baltimore, through Wilmington, up to Philadelphia, and on to New York. He changed his name once he got to New York to hide his identity on the fugitive slave trail. So Frederick Bailey became Frederick Douglass. The very next year, in 1819, my 
great-grandmother, young Betsy, gave birth to Frederick's half-brother and first cousin, my four times great-grandfather, Stephen Henry Bailey. Stephen and Frederick were brothers because the slave master was their father, but they were also cousins because the slave master raped two sisters. My grandfather, Stephen, married my grandmom, Caroline. On November the 14th, 1841, they gave birth to my three times great-grandfather, George Washington Bailey, the first black public school teacher in Denton, Maryland, hometown of Harriet Tubman's parents. The Civil War begins in 1861. Frederick Douglass doesn't fight, but he sends his two sons, my cousins Lewis and Charles. They go north to Boston, Massachusetts, and they fight in the Boston, Massachusetts 54th Color Regiment. If you ever seen the movie Glory, Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman, that's the story of my cousins Lewis and Charles Douglass. But not only that, Martin Delaney, grandfather of Pan-Africanism, his son was in the 54th Regiment. Sojourner Truth, the first black woman to win a case in court against a white man. Her grandson was in the Massachusetts 54th. My grandfathers, Stephen and, and um, George, fought in the U.S. Colored Troops of Maryland, 9th Regiment, 19th Regiment. That means my grandfather was at Appomattox Courthouse when General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant. My grandfather was in Galveston, Texas, on June 19th, when General Gordon Granger read Special Order Number 3, emancipating all Africans held in bondage within the state of Texas, from which we get the Juneteenth holiday, my grandfather was there. I say that to say, don't let no history teacher tell you that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. Abraham Lincoln didn't free the slaves. The slaves freed Abraham Lincoln. When the Civil War was over, Grandpa George married Grandma Manny. They had Grandma Caroline. She moved to Philadelphia. She had Grandma Vivian. Grandma Vivian marries a Spanish-speaking Cuban immigrant from Havana. Great-grandpa Cicero. They had my Grandma Ida, who passed five years ago. She married James Johnson. They had Jamal Johnson. He met and married Barbara. And on August the 21st in the ghettos of North Philadelphia, the anniversary of the Haitian Revolution, the anniversary of the Nat Turner Revolution, the anniversary of the George Jackson Revolution, I was born in North Philly. Frederick Douglass said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess the faith of freedom but deprecate agitation are like men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want the rain but can't stand the thunder or the lightning. They want the ocean but they're scared of the awful roar of the waves. He said, a man may not get all you pay for, but you will pay for everything that you get. And if we as a race are ever to become free of the injustices inflicted upon us, we will pay for their removal. You might pay with words. You might pay with money, you might pay with blows, you might have to pay with your life. But freedom is not free. Frederick Douglass said, for 20 years I prayed on my knees to God for freedom. But the good Lord above gave me no freedom until I got up off my knees and started praying with my feet. He said, you want respect from white people? Why do you look for pity? The man who pities you will never respect you. And the man who respects you has no need for pity. Power can seize nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. Black power.